Barrett Salih of CBSSports.com. Barrett, we mentioned just a few minutes ago, two weeks ago, you told us, Tennessee's going to beat Florida. You've seen it happen now. Tennessee's 4-0. How does that affect your thoughts on where Tennessee is right now, the season, and maybe an update on the program now that you've seen it? It really doesn't change what I thought the program would be. I thought they'd be 4-0. I, I thought that uh, the offense would be as stellar as it has been, and I thought defensively there would be some some ups and downs, and and we've seen that. So, you know, it's not they're not perfect, right? Like they're flawed. They have you know some defensive issues. Obviously, the secondary, you know, letting <clears throat> excuse me, letting Anthony Richardson light them up is not ideal, but. I think right now they're deserving of a top 10 ranking. Everybody, you know, outside of the big three have flaws. Tennessee obviously is one of them. It's one that I think they can overcome, whether it be with more consistent defensive play or just the offense relegating that to being a non-issue or a minor issue. So it's pretty much right where I thought it'd be. And I know Tennessee fans are excited about it. And, you know, unlike when Butch Jones, you know, had them in top 15 or whatever it was, this this feels much more sustainable based on the way Josh Heupel has built this program. What are you expecting in the uh, LSU Auburn game? Uh, pain for Auburn. <laughs> <laughs> I think right now it's just they don't have a, a quarterback. They the offensive line is just flat out dreadful. They seem to forget that Tank Bigsby exists that prolonged period of time. And they don't get much of a, a pass rush outside of Derek Hall, who's I, I, the fact that Derek Hall's had a, such a great season is mind-boggling, considering there have been like three guys on him at all times. But yeah, I mean it's just a broken program. Whereas LSU, you know, Jaden Daniels has progressively gotten better. Uh, he's efficient. They've I think solidified some things on the offensive line, which is a little bit of a concern, and they can run the football. So I just think right now LSU is. Is, uh, is getting better, and I think um, figuring out its identity, and, and Auburn just doesn't have one, and that's, that's definitely problematic. Barrett Salee, CBSSports.com. Uh, you mentioned you like where Tennessee's program is and, and moving forward compared to what you saw when Tennessee had a really good start in, in 2016. And of course, we know the results from how that played out, but what makes you feel that way? Why do, why do you think this might be different for Tennessee moving forward? Well, because it's it's attractive not just, um, you know, from the sales standpoint, which, you know, Butch Jones is a pretty good salesman, uh, but, you know, there's there's actually meat on this bone, you know, and I think with the transfer portal, you're going to see a lot of of offensive uh, weapons look at Tennessee and and think, well, dang, I can succeed in that. You know, I can can be a superstar in that. I want to go be a part of that because it enhances my NFL draft potential. So I think – you know, the, the, the sales, the marketing aspect for Tennessee, it, it just sort of does it itself. And I think that's the, the difference. You know, Butch Jones was selling a bill of goods that, um, you know, was, was not there. And I think Tennessee, the, the brand in terms of what it's going to be under Josh Heifel has already been established. And that's going to attract a lot of really good players. And I think moving forward, you're going to see that. You're going to see Tennessee become – sort of a, a transfer portal destination for offensive skill players. And that's uh, that's how you win consistently in this day and age. How do you feel about Henning Hooker's chances to you know, win the Heisman? Saw where RG3 uh, said that he's the number one guy for him. I saw Matt Leinart say some really good things about Henning Hooker. But we know um, you know, this Alabama-Georgia game. But so far, I mean, so good. What, what are your – Thoughts on Henry Hooker continuing to play the way he's played and uh, have a real shot at being in New York and winning the Heisman? Yeah, he's got a shot at, at getting to New York. I think winning the Heisman is is a little different because, you know, generally speaking, you have to be in the college football playoff mix and, you know, through the end of championship weekend. If, if Hendon Hooker is going to do that, he's going to have to go win the SEC championship game in terms of winning the Heisman Trophy. But I certainly think that he can be a finalist. And, you know, for for a Tennessee player to be a finalist after everything that Tennessee has gone through, that's huge. So I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, being able to get to Atlanta and be visible against what we think will be Alabama. To do that, you're going to have to beat Georgia, <laughs> obviously. And, you know, otherwise, 
yeah, I think Hendon Hooker might, in the minds of some voters, sort of, uh, sort of revert back to sort of just an ancillary Heisman Trophy uh, part of the discussion because a lot of voters don't pay attention to college football 24-7, 365. So they're going to tune into championship weekend, and if they don't see Hendon Hooker, they're probably not going to vote for him, which is it, – it's stupid. I don't like it. It's lazy, but it's reality. Yeah, that last part is absolutely true. Barrett Salee, CBSSports.com, is with us. Do you have a most interesting SEC game this upcoming weekend? Yeah, I can't wait to watch Mississippi State and Texas A&M. In Starkville, after Texas A&M found a way to, to beat Arkansas despite fixing none of its problems, that is, and now they don't have Anaya Smith. So I think this is going to really tell the tale of where Texas A&M goes from here. They – Obviously avoided disaster, like in terms of a disastrous season uh, yet last week against Arkansas, but it can still be extremely disappointing. And so right now, does, does Texas A&M have what it takes to go score 24 points in Starkville against a, a really good offense? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that, But I want to see it. And that to me is – you know, look, we can talk about Arkansas, Alabama, all these other games, but Texas A&M was supposed to be a contender. I didn't think it was, but a lot of people did. What happens for the rest of the year sort of hinges on what happens in Starkville this weekend, and, and I can't wait to see see how, how that game goes. Personally speaking, I think there are going to be a lot, of, uh, a lot of upset Aggie fans after what happens in Starkville. Yep, I think that's right. Uh, a few weeks ago, if I had asked myself, hey, can Texas hang with Alabama? I would say, come on, of course not. And then it almost uh, was, an, was an upset. So if I asked the same question about Arkansas against Alabama, what should the answer be? Yeah, they can hang. Four of the last five Alabama road games, true road games, have been one-score one games. The only one that wasn't was Mississippi State last year. So – you know, and some of those teams weren't very good. You know, one of them was Florida. They fired their coach last season. You know, so I, I think it is – it's not the same Alabama team that we saw in 2020 when they didn't really struggle with anybody. In 2018, when they were on the revenge tour, uh, you know, after – or 2017, I should say. So, I mean – Arkansas has got a, t- a chance. They, they win the battle at the line of scrimmage. We don't know what Alabama's offensive line is going to look like. They have a very dynamic offense that is really hard to scheme for. And, you know, we don't know what their receivers are. And, obviously, Arkansas's pass defense is suspect, very suspect, but can Alabama exploit it? So, yeah, uh, you know, I think for, for Alabama, it, it's going to be hard for me to hop on board them blowing out opponents on the road considering what they've done historically over the last year plus and the fact the only time we saw them in a true road game against a decent opponent this year was Texas and they committed 15 penalties that's not that's not okay so I I definitely think Arkansas can hang all right Barrett uh, out the door college football the big focus Braves Mets though I know of great interest to you how does this play out as we're here in the final week of the regular season well, I can't wait to see it tonight. I think they, they take two or three from the Mets this weekend, and they sweep the Marlins in Miami. The Mets lose one against Washington early next week, and the Braves win the world or win the division for the fifth straight year. I can't wait to see it tonight. I know Degrom's pitched well against the Braves, but the Braves are 15 and 12 in games against Degrom, so his teammates don't really help him out, and I hope that's the case tonight. Okay. Uh, I know you've already tagged Old Takes Exposed, so I don't need to do that for you. We'll see how it plays out. Should be a fun college football weekend. (laughs) And then uh, next week, Tennessee gets ready for LSU, and we'll check in with you before that game takes place. Hey, Barrett, we appreciate the time as always. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, y'all. See you. Go, Rich.